How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Tales from the Dark Side. This is Season 2, Episode 1, and this one's entitled The Impressionist. This is from September 29th, 1985, and is the very first episode of Season 2. So yeah, pretty excited. Uh, kind of odd, uh, the last episode of Season 1 came out early August, and the first episode of Season 2 came out late September, so not even two months between the two seasons. Uh, kind of weird how old TV used to work sometimes. But yeah, really excited for the new season. Uh, I really love Season 1, and I'm curious to see if the show will change in season two, what will be the high points and the low points, and, and what cool stuff we'll get out of this season. So, really excited to jump into a new season here. Uh, this episode is directed by Arma Armand Masterini and stars Chuck McCann, Bobby DeChico, and uh, Jack Andarezzi. And the teleplay is written by Haskell Barkin. So yeah, Ahmed Masterini, Haskell Barkin, uh, two Dark Side regulars on this episode. Uh, this is based on a short story by M. Coleman Easton. Um, and this is about an alien who lands on Earth and scientists go up and try to talk to it. They have it in their lab and they quickly master its language, its verbal language, but not its body language, and they can come up and they can try to talk to it, but without having the right body language, this is just going to upset the alien, and he's going to either clam up or attack them. That's not good, and to make things uh, more desperate, the alien has the secrets to nuclear fusion, which the government desperately wants, but they may not be able to get them in time because they're worried about how long the alien will last inside Earth's atmosphere. It may not be able to survive here long. They may not have much time. Well, if body language is the problem, they come up with a solution. They're going to get an impressionist, this guy at a comedy club that's a master impressionist. He gets every little gesture right, and this guy will be able to figure out the alien's body language. And overall, there's a lot to like in this episode, and there's a lot of interesting ideas. But that being said, it is kind of cheesy. It's one of those that I kind of like because it is cheesy, but I do know that this could be way, way better. There's some really interesting ideas in here. The idea that the language and the body language are two different things both of which you have to master if you want to communicate with this guy. That's a really interesting concept, and the idea of having to bring in someone that's a professional in body language, but he's not a scientist, and he's not really equipped for, you know, UFO stuff, and thrusting him into this position that, you know, could really help out the world. Yeah, that's an interesting idea, you know, that whole... Uh, I'm not really cut out for this, but I have to do it, and I'm the only one for whatever reason. Interesting stuff. Uh, but this does suffer from, uh, two common dark side problems. The half-hour time block and the low budget. Uh, getting into the time block first, dark side had a half-hour time block, so the episodes would be roughly 22 minutes long. And this is one that really could have used a, a lot longer. I mean, you could have even done a whole movie with this if you wanted to. The idea of this guy, he's at first, he's at first forced. And then later on, it kind of becomes his obsession where he wants to figure out the alien's body language. He wants to do it on his own accord. You know, seeing that obsession set in and seeing the days and days that it's taking him to do this and figure it out you know, failure after failure, but working towards something, that's something that really could have been done better with a longer time block because, you know, they reference time passing, but you don't really get the feel that he's been at it for, I think, I think the total time they say at the end is a couple months, and it doesn't really feel like a couple months, and 
I feel like with a longer runtime, you could really get the sense of struggle and obsession forming within this. It, it could have been better with more time, and I kind of want to go and read the original short story because in short stories, you know, in the written word, they really get, you know, ideas and themes, you know, a lot easier being able to get into characters' heads and say what they're feeling. And in the written word, you also get the expression of time passing. You can do that a lot easier as well. So I am really curious how the short story went. I bet you it really got the themes down a lot better than they could have done on TV. I said this in my review for season one, but if any of the dark side people happen to be watching, I would love to buy a book, a book from you guys that's a collection of the short stories that would go on to become Tales from the Dark Side. I would really love a collection of the source material. It, it would be so great uh, because as it stands now, they all come from different places and you have to track down all these short story collections if you want to read the original Dark Side Tales. So I would love it if you guys put them all in one place. That'd be so great. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the runtime. The other issue with the budget, and I guess got to talk about it, uh, the creature is a cheesy 1950s creature. It's this blue alien with a head and two big brain lobes. It's one of those giant brain aliens. Uh, think the creatures from this island Earth. Uh, think later on um, you would get Mars Attacks who would parody this style of alien. And then even later on you would get uh, Futurama doing it with Morbo the News Monster. So yeah, he's one of the giant brain aliens. Classic 1950s stuff. He's got his head and he's got his blue hands and then he's got a silver suit which saves them from having to do even more creature effects, you know, and you can you can kind of tell that the the costume doesn't go any farther than it has to and that the suit is kind of a way to avoid having to do tons of creature work. It's a good cheesy 1950s alien and I'm I'm sure lots of people had fun remembering this. It's a really fun and cheesy design, and I really do like it, and I'll definitely be remembering it. But the problem is, the episode doesn't go for a cheesy camp feel. You know, it's not trying to be dumb, goofy fun. This episode's trying to be very serious. And then in turn, when you get the goofy alien running around, it's fun, but it's not what the episode's trying to do. And this is another case of if you remade this nowadays, you would be, you know, doing a big, weird CGI alien creature. They would be able to do this so much better, even on a TV budget nowadays. For what it is, it's cheesy. It's not supposed to be cheesy, but you get some dumb fun out of it. Also, one thing that's kind of unfortunate with the plot and this creature is they go, oh, the complexities, the little intricacies of its body language. But then you look at the creature and he's got these big foam hands and it's like, yeah, you can't really get too much complexity with these body languages when you get this guy in this big rubber suit. Yeah, you don't really get the intricacies and details that the characters talk about. So yeah, something is missed there. And yeah, overall, this has some really good ideas, but kind of a cheesy execution. And I do find a lot of the cheesy execution fun and the creature is really memorable but I can't help but deny I can't help but say that it definitely could be done way way better so yeah I kind of wish we saw a better more cleaned up serious and longer version of this episode but for what it is I mean you have to have fun with the blue alien guy right so yeah Kind of a toss-up here, but definitely a memorable dark side creature. Uh, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to talk a bit about the plot more specifically. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to analyze the episode in further detail and talk a little bit about the plot. I just won't be talking about the end or anything. Uh, so we open up. There's a impressionist, a comedian at a big club, and his name is... Spiffy Romeo, because why not? Uh, anyway, he's doing impressions, 
and the crowd is liking. He's got a big crowd. They're all laughing. Life is good for this guy. He's a minor celebrity. Now, that being said, when I first saw this act, I was really worried this was going to be another one of Dark Side's outdated comedy episodes. You know, it's just that weird old humor that just doesn't hold up anymore. You know, he's on stage and he's doing the OK sign and they're like, you know what this reminds me of? Thursday. Well, why would that remind you of Thursday? Because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? And it's just these weird old jokes that just make no sense. And I am glad that this is not a full-fledged comedy episode, because if that was the whole thing, oh, that would be... Yeah, season one did a few really outdated, you know, not offensive, just they don't make any sense by today's standards. Season one had a little bit of that humor, and I really am glad that it's just confined to the act, and that this isn't a whole comedy episode. Uh, and then you actually get afterwards his agent, who's like, you really need to freshen up that act, and I, I couldn't help but agree with the agent there. And he's like, you need to tell new jokes, you need new material. And the guy, the comedian's like, no, I don't need new material, because I've been refining this material till it's perfect. And granted, they are live shows, so it's not like people are seeing them over and over again. It'd be like a different crowd each time. But he says that he's perfected this routine over the course of 10 years. And I'm like, you have not changed your routine for 10 years. How can you stand to do that? Oh, man, that was crazy. But anyway, after the agent leaves... Uh, this guy walks in. You see, during his set, he saw this strange man in a Hawaiian shirt, and he's unnerved by him, and the guy walks into his dressing room after the show's over and says that he's from the government, and he has no choice but to come with him and has a big bag to put over his head. We then cut to the guys in a secret government laboratory gotta love secret government laboratories, right? Very Stranger Things-esque. But he's in the secret government laboratory, and they take him into a group of scientists, and they have a window. It's a one-way mirror, and behind the window is an alien. I described him earlier, big blue head. And they say, he just landed. He knows the secrets of nuclear fusion the country needs those you know it help it would help us out a lot but we don't know how long he'll survive on earth so there is a bit of a time limit and we need to get the secrets out of him and they say that they know the language but not the body language and they give this guy a little headpiece to translate and they see one of the scientists has this like bandage on his face because he went up and tried to talk to him got it wrong and got smacked by the alien later on you'll see like the alien grab at one guy's arm and you know like they're going in but their body language is all wrong which is actually one of those things like when you think of it you know imagine someone coming up and talking to you in perfect english but they're just doing weird stuff with their body like from the alien's perspective <laughs> That must be pretty freaky, right? Um, but there's a few things in the scene that don't have super much payoff. Like they say, oh, we have a translator for him. We figured out his language, right? But the translator doesn't come up too often. Like they don't talk to each other too much. And you think that there'd be back and forth in the conversation as he's trying to do the moves right. But the actual translator, it's just kind of there and they just kind of dance around each other, you know? So I don't know why they made such a big deal out of the translator. But also, the guy that gets smacked, the scientist, later on we see him, you know, and he's like scratching his hand, and you think, oh man, did that alien give him like some sort of poison damage? Is, is he gonna fall victim to the alien sickness? Uh, but no, he's just better later on, so I don't know why they, it looked like they were gonna do something Maybe it's a deleted scene, I don't know. But anyway, of course, talking to the alien isn't going to be the easiest thing ever. And it's going to take this guy multiple months in attempts. How long does the alien have left? Can he crack it? 
and after a certain point, does the government even believe in him? And it's got some interesting ideas, and it does build to a final scene, one of those episodes with a really cool final shot, and I'm like, okay, that's an interesting place where you're going. I obviously won't spoil it, but it does build to a lot I like, but again, it's one of those that I could have definitely seen going on for much, much longer. You could even do a whole movie based on this. Uh, granted, kind of did with Arrival, but that was different. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I just wish it had more room to breathe. And like I said, I love the cheesy alien costume, but it is kind of detrimental to the point they're trying to get across. Again, fun, but yeah, could have been better. So overall, kind of a cheesier episode of Dark Side. It's fun, and I like it for what it is, but I definitely could see a better version of this coming out, and part of me really does want to see that, but still, a fun episode, so definitely would recommend it there. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Tales from the Dark Side playlist. I've actually talked about every single episode of Season 1 and did the whole Season 1 review. And I've also done the Christmas episodes and the Joe Hill comics. So if you guys want to see me talk about a bunch more Dark Side, you can find that in this playlist down here. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.